Hey everyone, welcome back to Linux Weekly, daily Wednesdays where we sit back, relax, take that midweek break, talk about some of the fun things going on in the world of Linux, open source, and anything else that we just happen to find interesting. I'm Vince Stone, that is Joe Bryan, together with you, watching us live on Twitch. How is it going? Woo-hoo. we got a packed up show. For yeah, we do. This week. We're going to try to get in and out and quick. We had a little bit of a, would, wouldn't call it a fire, just like some smoldering embers right before uh, the show. Yeah. Turns out. The third person in LA cut on their HVAC system, knocked the power out. <laughs> yes, it does happen. But what's unusual is my internet went out for a couple minutes. So that doesn't normally happen. Is there a more <laughs> helpless feeling? Uh, than, oh, yeah, that, not at all. <laughs> it's a little bit better. I should remember to A, charge up my little MiFi puck, LTE puck, or have it with me anywhere near the house, which I rarely do. So when the internet goes down, I'm like, hmm. Well, what's there to do? I'll go get my book. Mm-hmm. That's not a fun society, I think, would collapse without the internet very quickly. Not as quickly as the power went out for, let's say, a month, but imagine a week without being able to contact anyone online. Oh, yeah. I, it, it It's amazing how, you know, most of our lives revolve around the internet now. <laughs> it's yeah. just... Like, yeah. Society, you know, it would be difficult to buy things on top of that. How much cash do you have on you? You're not going to be able to use uh, your ATM debit card. You can't use yeah, PayPal. Debit. You can't order online. I know. I always, me and my hubby always keep a, a, a stack of cash in a cupboard. Remember that, everybody watching the show. Where do you live? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and we have lots of rolls of quarters. <laughs> rolls, rolls, rolls. So. I know Steve was saying that you were excited about tomorrow. Yeah, so we're going to Disneyland tomorrow, and uh, me and my husband go monthly, and it's our vacation, so we go every month, and I'm really looking forward to it, going to the happiest place on earth, and having a lot of good food, and spending time with husband, and going on some attractions. And the other thing, then, is I should be getting my Steam Deck this weekend. Woohoo! <laughs> <laughs> we were talking about that a little bit. Um, you, what is it? Sometime between Thursday and Saturday? Yeah, <laughs> that's what that's what my uh, tracking said. So, because <laughs> because of for reasons those of you who don't know, <laughs> that means that you will be hearing the delivery truck starting at about eleven forty-five Thursday until it eventually shows up. Wait, yeah, is, is that it? <laughs> let, me, let me go to the front of the house and just take a look at. No, oh, okay. Might be oh, at midnight. oh, was that it? <laughs> back and forth, knowing full well you'll get the email notification immediately. And you're like, oh, well, okay. Yeah. I don't like playing those games, but I've been there and I will continue to be there because I'm a person. Like, did I just hear them drop that off? So, what do we got going on? I noticed, I noticed something a little strange. It, it felt weird seeing it uh, yesterday. Nvidia released some new drivers. Well, you know, every Linux user's favorite company. Huge fans of open source. Nothing but love. We're going to talk about the cynical thing in a minute, so just calm down. Yeah. Um, <laughs> they released a new driver, and I'm just going over it for Saturday's show. Taking a look, and I get to the bottom, and there's a link next to, like, read me, change log, and it says, source. That was a weird feel. That was a weird feel, seeing that on an NVIDIA post. I'm like, oh, let's click that, and we'll go, oh, wow. Yeah, it is. We, we get source updates and stuff like that. So that was really good to see. Also, I got the awesome. Jitsi thing sorted out, which was good. I got rid. You never saw it on the show. We saw it with Jordan because we had to crop. Jitsi decided to put fellow Jitster. In. Oh, yeah. 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 And, you know, of course, Jordan immediately started abusing it, which I'm a huge fan of, fully supported, but I want to get rid of it. <laughs> and, um, you know, there wasn't a mechanism in the config file that even addressed this thing. And, you know, I changed it to a dot and kind of a work around in that nightmare of a config file. And like a week later, come to find out that it was a new feature introduced in Jitsi. And I I was reading through because somebody else, I wasn't the only person, like, why did this start showing up? This is messing up my shots. And uh, somebody wrote in like, oh, no, you just disable it on this line in the config file. It wasn't in the config file. If you had an existing install, so if you're wondering, (laughs) yeah, it's there. You just have to add it and change it to false. So, yeah, small victories, Jill, small victories. I'm happy about that. That's awesome. Uh, now, <laughs> I refuse to believe that a cynical person 
in the history of ever has run Linux. We're not a cynical oh. group. We're not. <laughs> like Ben Stone. <laughs> Always a cynic. <laughs> I'm pragmatic. Cynic. <laughs> mm. Yeah. But <laughs> sick of Windows, but can't afford a Mac. So you know this is starting off fun. Consult our cynics guide. Yeah. <laughs> To desktop Linux. Oh man, a reasonable list of the least bad, the best of the worst, you might even say. Linux distributions. A couple of things on here, you know, and again, I just don't think cynical people run Linux, and I'm only half joking. The list consists of like Debian and nine inferior distributions. Yeah, it does. Uh, like my previous statement, you mm -hmm. know, this article is just something to stir the pot, generate some comments, and hey, let me know what you think in the comments, fam. Yeah. Uh, on the list, what do we have? We got Ubuntu, we got Mint, Debian, Fedora, and the types of people who run Suzy on the desktop. Yes, contrary to popular belief, that is not just legend. I know for a fact people run Suzy on the desktop. We have two of them in our Discord, and it kind of shows. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, we have Debian and Arch. Uh, well, that's the thing. Like Debian and Arch, they get a lot of babies. Derivatives. Yeah, they sure and do. <laughs> so this list covers a lot of them, and... It's a good thing we have these derivatives because we get nice things like Mint, Pop, Manjaro. The list also yeah. includes Chrome OS Flex, but it didn't include Windows Subsystem for Linux. Jill and I would say yeah. those two are about the same thing yeah. because neither <laughs> of them are true. really a Linux distribution, now are they? Exactly. <laughs> I agree. <laughs> yeah, and this was a really a fun uh, ton and cheek article. Uh, you know, he, he, he did say it in the article that Ubuntu Mate and Zubuntu are not niche distros, uh, uh, are niche distros, but no, actually they are niche. They aren't niche distros. They are official Ubuntu flavors that are supported quite heavily and regularly. <laughs> so that was inaccurate in the article, but you know, it, it's okay. It was a really... Uh, there was a lot of truth in that article about the different distros, especially for new users. And um, I really enjoyed reading um, the guide that he wrote. His name was Liam Proven. And even though I didn't agree with everything he said, I do like that he chose Linux because it sucks. He says it sucks less than other OSs. <laughs> so there is that. <laughs> You gotta write stuff like I mean I understand the yeah. whole point of the article is like the churn up's like ooh this is gonna get people talking and and it did there's like it I think two hundred and yeah. something comments on that article because everyone's got to jump in yes <laughs> you know I I would just been like yeah just run Debbie and everything else is dead and, yeah uh, <laughs> rawr. but you know it made me think about it you, you know mm -hmm. we have in these camps in reality. Uh, Everything's an off branch of either Debian. Fedora's is kind of its own thing. I mean, I know there's spins of Fedora or something that's spun off of Arch and Manjaro, you know, Babby's first Arch. Yeah. So everything else is just a different take on that. And I know I've said it a couple of times on this show, and I've probably harped on it more on uh, Linux Gamecast Weekly. Is it, I just don't care what distribution I run so mm -hmm. much as if, if it boots neat if it boots with network support bonus and yeah. if it boots into hex or Wayland these days i'm like all right i'm good i can rip anything out and that's why i kind of stress learning how to use linux not to get locked into how a particular distribution does a certain mm -hmm. way and over the last man. decade mm -hmm. of making guides for people that's why i was dumped to the terminal because that terminal is going to work no matter if you're on Susie, on manjaro on debian on fedora on mint on Pop, Pop was included. It was, it was good to see Pop in there. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And, and like you, Vin, you know, with, with Linux, it, Linux to me is I can run any distro at any time as long as I have, you know, basic internet and the tools that I need. I don't care what distro I'm in. And usually I don't even run the, the default desktops of the distros. <laughs> so I still like my X window managers. <laughs> That was one of the things that was brought up in this yeah. uh, little piece of, like, well, it's just a bunch of confusion. You know, I think yeah. they were talking about um, Mate. It's like, it comes with different desktop managers. And I'm like, that, that's a plus, not a yeah. negative. <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> yeah. Yeah, definitely with Ubuntu Mate. And, uh, but yeah, he had a really good point is that, yeah, there is a lot of choice in Linux and it, and that can be confusing for new users, but it's that choice that makes Linux uh, special and what mm. makes it unique. And no, uh, Joe, you're clearly just describing the fragmentation problem that Linux <laughs> has. No, it's not fragmentation. It's choice, you know, and experimentation and because of fragmentation, there has been progress in the desktop in the mainline distros. Like, for instance, Ubuntu Mate, a lot of the innovation there has landed in, in the stable Ubuntu releases. So there, there's a good reason for all those derivatives. One of the things about, and you will see the fragmentation thing brought up a lot, it is an arena of ideas, and that's good. You got a mm-hmm. bunch, of, bunch of them fighting it out with different yeah. takes on it. And you know what? The good things surface to the top. That's what Jill's trying to get to you. And yeah, that's how it works. And that's, you know, you're not stuck with like the Windows 11. Hey, guess what? You're a Mac now. You have the taskbar in the middle of the screen. Oh, man, that was delightful. For oh, weeks, yeah. I get to see people screeching about that. <laughs> I know. So some, something so simple. And we as Linux users are like, what? We've been customizing our desktops for so many years. It's Put it where you want, but yeah. this is one of the rare, rare times, man. I was like, yeah, that's where I have my XFCE launcher. That's the right place to put it. Deal with it. Yeah. <laughs> so good so article. True. This will be in the show notes if you want to go back and uh, let us know what you think about it. Uh, leave a comment on YouTube video or uh, send in some email, however you want to do it, because we need to talk about Discord on the desktop. Somebody's angry. Yeah, so this is a letter to Discord for not supporting the Linux desktop by not updating it to a newer version of Electron in the Electron framework, which uh, the Discord app uses on Linux and Windows. <laughs> so Discord actually, you know, really needs to rebase to a newer version of Electron to, you know, fix everything from security bugs and improve stability and improve compatibility with newer technologies. Especially on Linux, we have Pipewire and Wayland. And uh, unfortunately, the Discord app currently does not support Pipewire (laughs) and Wayland. And, you know, and audio and video from the Electron app on Linux does not work on the Steam Deck. Hello, Discord, are you listening? It is not working on the Steam Deck. You have a potential of a lot of new users of Discord (laughs) on the Steam Deck, and that does need to be supported. And uh, it's just all these annoying things about it, like like me and you, Ven, we have to have to update a deb for Discord, you know, every every month or so, (laughs) and that gets annoying. (laughs) It really does, having to update constantly. So it would be nice if there was a a smoother way for them to do that, maybe making it a flat pack or or just just updating Electron and doing the updates internally on the app. They do do updates to the software, but major updates you have to download and install. So Yeah, I'm yeah. looking at... Um... Mm-hmm. Yeah, according to Strider, it does work on the Steam Deck. So, oh, okay. Um, See, I haven't had a chance to test it because I don't have my Steam Deck yet. I, <laughs> does um oh does the audio and video work, Matthew, on the Steam Deck? That um, might be, yeah, that probably would be it. Like you couldn't get I don't, something to test out. Strider, you're looking for something to yeah. do this afternoon. There you go. Let yeah. me know. But Jill, mm-hmm. we're talking about Discord, so I I feel. I should say, nay, it is my personal responsibility. Have you heard about Matrix? Yes, <laughs> I use Matrix at work. <laughs> yes. And yeah. it is a good, actually, this it is, is a, see, see, a good Discord now, now, alternative. Now we're getting into it right there. It's like, yeah. oh, we're talking about this Matrix. Well, let me tell you about Matrix. All right. Um, this is uh, this is the common thing with like um, yeah. Matrix fan base. It's pretty <laughs> interesting. Oh, yeah. Hashtag, not hash, slash, just quit using Discord. Look, I saved everyone a lot of comments. I did. I just did because that was like, oh, have you heard about Matrix? Why are you using Discord? That's dumb. <laughs> Tell me why you use Discord. That's where the people are. You want to talk to people watching your show or doing your thing or you want to hang out with your friends. Why did Skype live for so yeah. long? 
Everybody's mm-hmm. using Skype. Grandma was using Skype. Grandpa was using Skype. Everyone you wanted there. to talk to your family. You had to use <laughs> Skype. Guess what? Discord's that thing now. It is. Um, Absolutely. Mm-hmm. So to whether or not is Discord listening, they're not. I guarantee you they're not. Discord is in the like try desperately to monetize the business model phase of their business currently. That's what mm-hmm. they're doing. Um, don't expect a lot of reach out for any of this. It's just not going to happen. I mean, they're like, you're seeing it with like what's getting released and updated with Discord. Like, hmm, how can we, you know, monetize this or monetize this? That's just where they're at. That's not for good. That's not for bad. But yeah, yeah Discord, you got some old electron bones and you might even call it outdated because that would be something I like to call accurate. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and it's going to cause issues like pipe wire oiling. Mm-hmm. That's the new and stuff. It, you know, in just yeah. 10 years from now, everyone's going to be using that. So you need to keep an eye on it. And he does bring up a point. He's like, hey, can we get like all this crammed together and just working in like a flat pack? To which I'll argue, like, maybe. I mean, I'd rather see it in a flat pack than a snap, but more on that in just a minute. Uh, mm-hmm. I do want to say for my arch loving brothers and sisters out there there is a discord package that will use your native version of electron if this Mm -hmm. is something you want to work around that's not a problem but Mm -hmm. the real moral of this entire story joe yeah (laughs) is that you should just run discord in the browser like a normal person okay (laughs) there is that the i i run i wouldn't even call it a desktop. I run Discord on, like, I have Discord up on a tablet, and I have Discord in a tab in a browser. And that's where it lives. I, like, I do have the app open right now, but that's just because we're streaming. And I don't need it for that. But, yeah, I just, I don't think a glorified web page that is Discord really needs its own separate app. Maybe you feel different, and that's cool. We can still hang out. You can come over to my house. We'll play Sonic the Hedgehog. But, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, it used what? to be once upon a time, then with the Discord app, you had to run it to get all the features. That all the features weren't available on running it from from the web. But now that's changed. So <laughs> that's my secret, Joe. I yeah. didn't use any of those features. Yeah. <laughs> I, I'm one of those crazy people that. What did you use Discord for? Chatting. But but it does all this other nonsense that you do. Uh, chatting. I do that. Hey, maybe they'll get it sorted, but I wouldn't hold my breath. In the meantime, go tell more people about Matrix. I got to play with Matrix at some point, but oh, we have a Discord as well. Ha, ah, check that out. Uh-huh. Now, we we're talking about Firefox <laughs> and Snaps. We've been over yeah. it a couple times. We've addressed it. The internet's addressed it. And uh, Canonical hasn't listened to anybody. I'm just kind of kidding. They've listened enough to be like, hey, we, we need to get on this. Maybe we need to get ahead of this. So we got a post from the blog, how we're improving Firefox snap performance part one. I like to see that. I do like to see that Mm -hmm. this is not one and done. How are you going to prove why, what stock photo did you dig that out of? Um, All right. What is this going to be about? All right. You might know Firefox got snapped up in 2110. Everyone was crazy excited about it. And um, yeah. Mm-hmm. Not excited in a good way. Still crazy excited about it. And currently, like all snaps, they make a good point. It makes a very good point. It's really slow to open on first boot. Dreadfully. Like, how slow is it? Fit? Oh, let me tell you. It takes over 20 seconds to cold open on a Raspberry 4, a quad core. That's enough time to go get something to drink and come back. Absolutely. Uh, <laughs> yeah, that's huge. So this post lets us know about some of the slowness canonical has identified they've looked at it they've taken a look at the performance like hey we can improve here we can improve here we can probably improve here it even tells you the user how to get the benchmarks to get your own data your own statistics so you can play the home game and i thought that was pretty nice of them Mm -hmm. but they don't they don't mention for some reason you know i did control f and i just uh couldn't find it joe and i did look uh, they, they didn't tell anyone how to really fix the performance until they get all of this fixed and snap let's install the uh, firefox thunderbird ppa yeah 
<laughs> Absolutely. That yeah, that's what I do. your performance problems and it just starts up every <laughs> time. On phone and then it's updated Absolutely. by the Mozilla team. and uh, Or the tarball from the Mozilla website oh, like I do. download it and launch it and then double yeah. it and you get done like that. <laughs> That fixes the problem too. But hey, if you like uh, testing unfinished software in production, snaps, go for it. I don't know. I'm, and uh, I'll give snaps as much snat- static as uh, I'll give flatbacks. Like I'm not sold on desktop application containerization. I'm waiting for somebody to change my mind. I mm-hmm. still very much feel like we're solving problems that I was unaware we had. And yeah. Again, I could just be old, and I'm very well telling the next generation to get off my non-containerized lawn, Jill. What are your yeah, thoughts on this? I'm, I feel the same, too. What is wonderful about this, though, is that it is a partnership. Canonical, Canonical builds the Snap, but is published and maintained by Mozilla. So the Firefox Snap is the push Canonical needs to improve Snap speeds. We've been waiting a long time for improvement on Snap speeds. And uh, again, um, this will help them improve uh, snaps on the cold start when, when the uh, program first launches and um, help them focus a bit more on the desktop again. That, that, that would be nice, <laughs> have more focus on the desktop. But yeah, I agree with Vin. I, I don't use containers unless I absolutely have to generally. I like to install my, you know, Debs and or or you know DNF all the things. <laughs> so yeah, it's snaps do really need to be improved. But what was really awesome in this article is it went into detail on where it needs to improve. Like in, in when you cold start Firefox in the Squash FS seeking because it is a compressed file that unpacks in the software rendering. In the extension handling, because Firefox looks for the extensions of previous versions of Firefox on your system and loads the extensions, and uh, font and icon handling, as well as you know many other uh, things that that the app does when you load a snap. But I'm glad they went into detail about it, and they're asking for help to solve a lot of these problems. That's something else that we've needed. <laughs> it is very much reading down a list of like, oh, we need to fix this. We need to fix this. It's like, yeah. that's great. We're going to get all this sorted before we push out in production. Yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I wish it best of luck. I have yeah. nothing but love for everybody working on that project. Maybe you'll get it sorted. Maybe it'll be a thing. Who knows? Now mm-hmm. we get to do something that I'm getting to in a while. Yeah. And that, Jill thinks we're going to be talking about a laptop. And that's Uh-oh. incorrect. What I'm going to be doing is ah. seeing how well they photoshopped the laptop picture. I know. Yeah. Look at that. The All lighting. All right. Let's get yeah. this great here. I'm not seeing any <laughs> overspill going around. We're looking good. Now, you did. You kind of did an easy one right there with the Starfield. Uh, okay. Yeah. The, okay. That's a little sharp. That's a little sharp on the CPU right there. Maybe round that off a little bit. That's looking good. Ah, it's kind of 3D at the top. Ah, right, yeah. Okay, outside of the AMD 5000 Ryzen, I'm going to give you a 7 <coughs> out of 10 on the screen shoot. Yeah. So, well done, Duxedo. They did a good job with the lighting and everything. It's it's on there on the processor. <laughs> <laughs> so, Jill's going to tell you all the boring stuff. I've been- yeah. <laughs> so, the German-based company Tuxedo Computers has introduced a new Linux laptop as an affordable business all-rounder, they call it. It's the Tuxedo Aura 15 Gen 2. And is it this- just me, or does it look like starting like from the, like around the U and I, like there's a lump in the middle of this thing, of that keyboard. Oh, yeah, I Could didn't notice be that before. It's got a full numpad, though, so I'd take yeah. a lump. Yeah, it's just the little positions of the keys are moved in a little bit awkward way but you know what that's common for laptops especially if they wanted to get the numpad on there (laughs) so that that does happen but anyways the specs of this laptop are amazing it it includes the amd ryzen 7 5700u with eight cores and 16 threads 
and an AMD Radeon RX Vega 8, and USB-C 3.2 Gen 2 with DisplayPoint, DisplayPort 1.4 and power delivery, optional LTE module for 4G LTE mobile high-speed web access, that's a nice touch, 180-degree rotatable display hinge, with a 15.6 inch full HD display at 300 nits, very nice screen. And despite how thin and light it is at three, only 3.6 pounds, it comes with a gigabit LAN RJ45 port. So you can actually do streaming on it. <laughs> it's got a full size so, port, but it's also yeah. got that uh, full size, uh, like that's going to break port. Um, you know, the one that like expands. Oh. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 I mean, not to dock it, but you got to call it what it is. I'm looking at Mm -hmm. up to nine hours of endurance. So that's at 150 nits brightness and wireless modules turned off. At least you're being honest about it, which is good. So about seven hours uh, browsing the web and um, nine hours of watching YouTube videos. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah, it it has good battery life, and that's a plus of this laptop. How much is this going to cost me? Um, well, uh, I did a configuration with the Ryzen 7, 16 gigs of RAM, a 500 gigabyte NVMe, um, with, and uh, installed with their Tuxedo S 22.04, which is based on Ubuntu. And it came out to be um, just over 1,000 euros and just okay. over 1,000 uh, US dollars. So it's not a bad price. It's actually a really good price for this quality of laptop. For a reasonably configured one, one that you want to use. The base model starting at 789 yeah. euros, which you yeah. know, it's going to get you like 8 gigs of RAM, you know, NVMe, 250 gigs and all that. Uh, and if you're living in Europe, this is a great solution to getting hit by, I mean, just reality economics of it, ordering a System76. Because, mm-hmm. you know, at 789 euros, that's including tax. You know, that's your 19% tax markup on that. And you're going to get hit with that and all the other fun stuff. So when you're in that side of the pond, yeah, yeah. definitely. Tuxedo's been around a long a time. A long time. They were one of the first uh, um, distributors uh, putting Linux on their hardware. So, right. Awesome. Pretty decent. You know what else is awesome, Jill? What then? Us. Our we're patrons. very, very awesome. <laughs> Not as awesome as our patrons. <laughs> if you'd like to become one of our awesome, awesome <laughs> patrons, head over to LinuxGameCast.com and we got a support button right there. We got a bunch of things that you can support. Pick a level that's comfortable for you. We turn that into entertainment, hopefully educational material, live streams when we get a chance and you get a couple of things in return. You get to hang out in our super secret Discord, which is great. That's awesome. It's a fun time, but don't worry about that. I hear you. You're like, I don't want... We have an IRC channel, and it's tied into our Discord's live channel. So if you're live, you can be an IRC or Twitch, and we can all hang out and talk together. But as a patron, we got a special show we do for you every Saturday called the Pre-Pre-Super Shows. And if you're wondering what our thoughts are and just current events, movies, films, TVs, everything else that's not necessarily Linux-related, that is there waiting for you each and every week in podcast and video format. Plus, you get the long and uncut, live and uncut, linky and uncut, however you want to call it. Yes. (laughs) Yes. <laughs> Versions of these shows, which is just the full live stream, but it's been produced, edited, just for any, you know, ins and outs and like that. But it's about two hours long, hour and a half long. And we're going to give that to you in MP3 and video for your viewing enjoyment. But we got a store. You can do that on top of everything else. Mm-hmm. It is there at LinuxEmcast.com. We even have Amazon wish list if you want to pick up something and make Jill read a note. Yeah. <laughs> or Ven read a, a read note. A note. <laughs> I got a stack of them on my desk, man. I'm like, yeah, that's kind of fun. You can we find the links to my, that. My booklet of all the things <laughs> Jill that my, them. Yeah, my patrons have sent us. Our beautiful patrons. <laughs> so unfortunately, they're out of um, the non-RGB penguin. Yeah. <laughs> that's true. Yeah, they are. We got yes, I have mugs. lots of penguins and penguin mugs <laughs> that typical typical joe bryant so yeah there it is i got one for the studio <laughs> i don't really have a personal one but i'll put you up on this wall back here if you want to be named and shamed that is also a thing we do thank you for your support and hey that's a little bit better than i don't know uh me undies yeah <laughs> <laughs> haven't bought underwear on i buy socks online though i have yeah. a re- i have a recurring okay uh 
<laughs> underwear. Bath, <laughs> bath towels and socks I have on like a three to six month. They just show up at the house from Amazon. I'm like, yeah. hey, look, more socks, which encourages me to wear socks up quicker. Yeah. All right. Slice <laughs> of pie for you. Slice of pie. And we're talking about cyber decks, so Ooh. I need some cyber pie. Yeah. That was nice. a good picture, Vin. Crispy piece of cross. Yeah. Piece man. of pie next to a raspberry pie, and it looks kind of like a cherry pie. It's red of some sort or a raspberry pie. You might call it lazy. <laughs> I call it efficient. It gets the a point raspberry across. pie next to a raspberry pie. <laughs> it's the bye pie. Yeah. We're, say, we're not saying bye pie. We're saying hello pie. To raspberry <laughs> pie to zero. Every time I read about the zero two W, all I go is like, I have one of those that I've not done anything with and I got to do something with it. Fun. Somebody's made a pocket sized Python experience for Pico projects on the go because, man, you really, <laughs> really want to do training some AI in Python on the go with the Raspberry Pi zero W2. Probably not, but you can. I don't know. I, I kind of went over this and I looked at it and I'm like, um, Jill, this looks like yeah. zero tape to a battery bank. The screen it does. <laughs> it does. But I thought it was cool that the whole idea of this project was so that he could learn Python on his uh, Pico Pi. So I thought that was really, really cool. And it, it looks, <laughs> it's not completely a completely finished looking product. So anyone can do this. What are you talking about? <laughs> so, that would absolutely go right through the TSA when I'm being onboarded, Jill. They wouldn't have any, yeah. <laughs> never ask a question about it. They're like, that's clearly not it. Yeah, that's a... You were saying though, man, uh, yeah. if you can sell me, like, cause that's a tiny little screen too. Yeah, it is a really tiny screen, but he's, he's able to, you know, do all the programming he needs for his, his Raspberry Pi Pico with it. So <laughs> it's, it's, it works for him. And I like that he just took, you know, he, he bought one of the little uh, Raspberry Pi keyboards and little screen and just <laughs> slapped it on there and it works. It's his, a portable computer that's functional. And he's got good vision, though, to be able to read, <laughs> read the code on that. I was about to say, because we're looking at the video, and like, if you really <laughs> zoom the camera in, you kind of read the text on the screen. Yeah. I mean, how, how big is that? In, what would be the freedom units? Uh, maybe three inches? Three or maybe or four three, inches? Four, four inches, yeah. That's, I guess it'd be usable. But, hey, he did the good thing. He made a list. Uh, there's a Dropbox link with a guide of all the parts list and it's something that you can stick together with some double-sided tape literally yeah. using double-sided tape which gets the job done <laughs> i think that's pretty cool i don't know like portable things like that they're novelties for me no granted i couldn't do the anything that he would be doing with that with the tablet mm -hmm. but yeah for mobile needs like anything more than you know what you do on mm -hmm. your phone i'm kind of there but that's neat it exists. So yeah, if you're building something like that, send it in. We'll talk about it. We'll look at yeah. it. We'll play a video and go, mm. neither of us could really use that. Joe couldn't read it. And that keyboard's no. too small for me to use it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so it'd but be very a, yeah, interesting it's a beautiful, team building exercise. Yeah, uh, absolutely. And it's a beautiful example of a cyber dick Python pie. <laughs> Honestly. <laughs> I, I get it. I get it. And that's all I can say with the cyber deck things. I get it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to hate on it, but mm -hmm. there's that. So mm -hmm. if you want to get in touch with us, you can always uh, send us an email. An email? Yeah, an email through a contact form, linuxteamcast.com forward slash contact. That's the best way to do it. If you want to be heard, we'll make sure it gets distributed to where it needs to go. Don't send it in a bunch of spammy links because you know what? Go ahead and do it because I get some joy. Once a month, I'll check our spam golem. And just see somebody trying to get a link through, not reading, yeah. even though there's <laughs> an email address right there on the page to send things with hyperlinks. It entertains me slightly. You want to do that? Leave us a comment on Patreon. Leave us a comment on YouTube video. Or you could do like this kid did. Uh, hit us back yeah. on Twitter because we were talking about the HP. Was it HP? No, Compact. Compact. No, it was the HP Dev1. The, the new laptop. All right. So it was HP. <laughs> it was the first one I said. The uh, first one. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I could remember. I get HP and Compaq confused. And well, yeah, because they did take over Compaq. Yes. But this is the HP uh, Dev 1. 
and it was a collaboration between System76 and HP, and uh, they put Pop! OS, the wonderful Ubuntu-based Pop! OS Linux on it. Well, they get everything together. I mean, it's a new piece of hardware. Yeah. They got a custom in, but more importantly, they got support. We had some questions up to including, like, I don't like soldered in RAM, but System76, Carl writes in to let us know. First, thanks for covering the dev one. Like, that's cool. Answer a couple of questions. Is the memory usable? Memory you memory is user upgradable. I cannot feel like Englishing this afternoon very good. Well, <laughs> sixty-four gigabytes. Uh, so yeah, you can put some more memory RAM Yay. into that. And one of my questions: support. Who do you call? Not the Ghostbusters. Nay, they have trained a team at HP, which I found out later on reading through our Discord. Uh, yeah, to provide tech support. So yeah. It will also be embedded with our support teams throughout the year for extra help as needed. Aw. So you do yeah, call HP you. for support. Yeah. Thank you, Carl Rochelle, for getting back to us. He is the f uh, founder and CEO of System76. And, uh, that uh, was really, really cool. I know they, they watch LWW over at System76, and that was really cool to get a response I from don't know Carl. if they watch. I just know we got half the team in our Discord. Yeah. So, um, <laughs> <laughs> the one thing I want to know is what happens if you got a dev one and you call system 76 for tech support, what happens there? Hmm. Hmm. I don't know. I, this is, That's... you know what? I'll have an answer to this from somebody before the end of this evening. Uh, but <laughs> you got to imagine this has happened, right? You got a box you want to play around Linux, like, hey, install Pop! OS. Somebody installs Pop! OS. They have a problem with Pop! OS on, you know, their generic box that they bought. Who are you going to call? Not Ghostbusters. They're like, I bet this has tech support. So they call System76. I'm like, hey, I installed your operating. What do you do with that call? You're like, ah, oh, that's nice. Bye. Um, maybe. Maybe not. Who yeah. knows? That's a fun thing to think about. I'll let Definitely. you know next week how they handle that, allegedly, or, or if I can say how they handle it. I don't know. I assume they're very polite and nice about it. So that's going to mm -hmm. do it for this week, Jill. We're at 37 minutes, a little bit long, okay. but we had a good time. <laughs> we got everything covered yes. that we needed to. So I'm going to bring up some music, and you know what? We're going to roll some credits for those Patreons we were talking Woo about. Woohoo! Yeah. We have so many wonderful Patriots. <laughs> We got our Theron, he's our advisor. And we got lots of ex executive producers. Oh, we got Omegas is an advisor as well. And our executive producers are Aldius, Barbrandt, Scott M, Atomic, Mike G. <laughs> I was careful, careful not to say Atomic's last name. Um, <laughs> and we have our sea monsters and our death notes. <laughs> we got Dirty Dean in there. <laughs> and our chairlings, like Mir in chat. We have Mir and all the people watching you right said now. We got Mir in chat, then we have Mir. So do we have two Mirrors or not? Answer. <laughs> we got Mir PPC. <laughs> all right, beautiful people. We'll see you next week. Bye bye. <laughs> bye, everyone. <laughs>